and welcome to this much anticipated first ever, very first ever, Birmingham Jefferson County State of Transit Address. I want to welcome you here to the Birmingham Museum of Art. I'm Art Franklin, and it is indeed my absolute honor and privilege to be your master of ceremonies for this, what is going to be an amazing night. You are witness to a first, so please give yourselves a big round of applause. This is the first. This is really pretty historic and evolving for the Transit Authority. This State of Transit Address marks progress, collaboration, economic investment, and also community engagement. We are here this evening to acknowledge the strides BJCTA has made and share with you the vision of the transit on the growth, moving transit forward. I'm telling you, it is really exciting times for BJCTA. But first, on behalf of BJCTA, we want to extend our heartfelt welcome to all the elected officials who have joined us tonight. So if you're an elected official here, I would like for you to stand so we can recognize you where you are. All elected officials, would you please stand? Well, thank you very much because we know that you are responsible for a lot of this. We also need to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to our sponsors, our partners on the State of Transit Address, your generous support and your belief in the vision of what Director Charlotte Shaw has put in place has really made tonight a reality. Let me name them for you. That's the State of Alabama, Alabama Power, the City of Birmingham, May Mobility, Jefferson County, Sloss Real Estate, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, and VIA. Please give our sponsors a big round of applause. <laughs> you know, BJCTA, we also like to do one other, thing, one other thing before we get started. We want to recognize from the Federal Transit Administration, the Director of Oversight and Program Management, Ms. Margarita Miranda Sandberg. Please give her a round of applause. We are going to hear from her a little bit later on, but for now, today's journey, you will learn about the transformative initiatives that were put in place to connect people to places, about the new commitment to excellence and innovation, inclusivity, and also sustainability. You will hear from some of the leadership of BJCTA, making some big announcements, new services, new products, and also, of course, the dynamic leadership and the director and CEO, Charlotte Shaw. She's going to wrap things up for us. So we want to thank you for joining us as we navigate the exciting path of progress for BJCTA. This is the state of transit. a vibrant um, transportation system and today that's where we're going. I'm a to get to school without the car because I started back to school that I'm liking that I ran into the CEO and we were having problems on our ride and she, was, she, she worked on it and it's much better. The Birmingham Jefferson um, County Transit Authority is in a well-placed position to make public transportation in the city of Birmingham efficient for anyone, not for those who just need it, um, of those who may want to, um, who have other options.
for the customer, we, we uh, improved our customer service. Uh, we made sure that those people were uh, handled in a better way than they were in the past. It's just not fixed route buses anymore. We have big paratransit vehicles. We have micro transit. We have Birmingham Rapid Transit System, BRT Express. And you have to have multiple modes of transit for the rider to choose from based off of what their, their personal situation is at that moment. Where well, Max is, they are all together different things. It, it really covers every aspect of the life. Where well, once upon a time, it was in one phase. For now, it covers everything. The state of transit today is definitely better than it was two years ago because of the addition of the Birmingham Express. Uh, it's demonstrated to just a new market of people um, what bus transportation can look like. The state of transit is very good now. We can only get moved to excellence, I think. Max, transit on the growth, moving transit forward. You know, every agency has a feel, a look, a brand. Our first presenter is charged with communicating the BJCTA story. She is the Director of Communications and Marketing. So please, welcome to the stage, Sam South. Good evening. Good evening. This is our season, our opportunity for growth like never before. We are Transit on the Grove. And under the innovative leadership of our CEO, Charlotte Shaw, Max is working to revolutionize transit in Birmingham, Jefferson County, and the municipalities we serve. At Max, our vision is to contribute to the life quality of our customers. And our mission, connecting people to places, goes far beyond transportation. It impacts our company culture, customer interactions, and our core values. These values are defined by the acronym GROWTH, representing great respect, ownership, winning, trust, and honor. GROWTH is our commitment to providing modern, innovative, and quality service as your transportation provider of choice. Why? Because there's value in choosing transit. Transit has been directly related to establishing more walkable communities, leading to healthier lifestyles. With the use of our CNG and electric buses, transit helps to supply greener emissions for cleaner air. And most importantly, transit offers affordable travel. Max has also developed new services allowing our riders to connect. And as many of you know, with new services comes new design. Max created an updated logo with a voice. Each color of our new X represents one of the valuable services available at Max. Max fixed route, paratransit, our Magic City connector, the electric bus, the new Birmingham Express, Max on demand, and executive services. The X has also influenced the new Max Fix Route bus and paratransit van, which you may have seen on your way in this evening. Our new designs are modern and vibrant, which we feel will add to the appeal of public transportation and encourage more customers to choose Max and ride with us. This year, Max will also keep customers better informed through our newly redesigned website, social media channels, our new integrated mobile app, which Herb will share with you today. And all of those things are working together to provide a better Max. At Max, we are dedicated to staying connected and communicating to each customer how much we care. We are ready to serve in exciting new ways and keep transit on the growth. Thank you.
So our next presenter is the director of the newly created Department of Customer Experience, Averius Foster. Please turn your attention to the screen. Every BJCTA journey begins with our customers. At BJCTA, we take this to heart. We see and hear our customers. This is an opportunity to serve our customers better. Every decision, every service is made with the customer in mind. Think of us as the chief of in the world of transit, where exceptional service isn't just expected, it's outstanding. But was there anything else I can do with you? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. The BJCTA recently formed Customer Experience Department is focused on ensuring proper and timely engagement with customers. It's a new customer experience we name the Maximum Experience Initiative. Our promise is to ensure that every interaction with us is characterized by value, appreciation, and support. We got a young man in the trade from Foster that anything that comes in the door, he makes sure it's handled and somebody has a uh, satisfaction from it. At Max, those interactions equal interactions with our customers. We're actively gathering customer insights through direct feedback and comprehensive surveys to gauge customer satisfaction. Every concern is meticulously logged in detail, evaluated, tracked, and prioritized based on its urgency. It's part of our commitment to addressing and resolving all issues within a five-day time frame. As we move forward, we're dedicated to ensuring the best experience for every passenger and stakeholder. That was to various possible. Please give him a round of applause. Before we continue on, there are a couple of people that we want to make sure that we recognize. We are very pleased to have the city of Birmingham as a great partner with us. Mayor Randall Woodman, where are you, sir? I know you don't like to come down, you don't like to be seen, but we need people to see you. If you would come on down so they can see you, sir. You know, we have to, we have to push them. As the mayor is coming, we also wanted to say happy 87th birthday to Jabba Wack. Mary, I know you don't have to say anything, just come on up and show how good looking you are. Mary, man. That's our mayor, give him a good vibe. And the Tenor Transit continues now with the Senior Director of Capital and Program Delivery, like Angie B. Finney. BJCT is launching its new, innovative 7030 plan. This means reallocating is larger. 30 foot buses to cover 70% of its services on major corridors. Supplementing 30% of its fixed route services using max micro transit and via on demand. This does not mean cutting back or terminating fixed routes. In fact, we'll add more buses to primary fixed route corridors. The system can run faster, with less wait times, and become more predictable and reliable. Our biggest challenge? would be to help people rethink the system with changes in educating our riders on new modes and how they all work with the reallocation of primary bus services to primary corridors. We are excited about the future of BJCTA, which extends far beyond improved bus services and designs. We envision BJCTA evolving into a financially sustainable and viable transportation business entity playing a critical role in our capital planning for infrastructure, economic growth, and more. Ms. White, thank you, Finney. Thank you. 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 Thank you to share how BJCTA is driving change now and in the future of public transit in Birmingham, Jefferson County. Because of the recent shifts in the industry, workforce challenges, and business, 
We have to rethink our services to meet the changing needs of the community creatively. From our new BRT to microtransit and on-demand services, we're changing with the customer in mind. The Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority serves a vast area, facilitating over 2 million trips a year with more than 100 dedicated operators for fixed routes and paratransit services. I like certain people probably not in Jefferson County. As our older buses reach their mandatory service lifespan, we're replacing our fleet. BJCTA just recently purchased nine new CNG buses with the support of federal grants. They'll join our fleet early this year. And thanks to the city of Birmingham, we now have 11 new BRT buses. But that's not all. Federal grants allowed us to modernize our paratransit services by replacing our fleet with 10 new vans. And BJCTA also purchased 11 microtransit vans, gearing up for our max operated services along with our partner for on-demand services. Max on demand, your journey, your way. In addition to via on-demand and microtransit, BJCTA will be launching its market rate executive services, which is similar to Uber and Lyft, offering non-shared rides from door to door. There are so many exciting things happening at BJCTA. To enhance our fleet, we are in the preliminary phase of crafting a new maintenance facility. It will be constructed to boast LEED certification for its environmentally sound design and cost-efficient operations. The structure will have separate bays for BRT and fixed route buses, paratransit, as well as microtransit vans and it will house a state-of-the-art workforce development center equipped to educate employees on the latest electric vehicle technologies and offer virtual reality training programs for mechanics and technicians. The center will not only serve our employees, but also those aspiring to join the transit industry, providing training courses and internships to nurture future talent. Our fleet is a testament to our forward-looking vision, setting into motion a shift to greener zero-emission vehicles over the next decade, aligning with future grant requirements and our commitment to sustainability. The future is bright. I think it's very possible that even in 2024, you could see autonomous vehicles operating uh, as part of our public transportation system in the city of Birmingham. Looking back at the transit system, rich past of the 1960s, we are inspired to service our now larger community with even more connections. We are adapting to change, preparing for economic shifts, infrastructure changes, while also aiming to be your transportation of choice. We are not just ready for tomorrow, at BJCTA, we're shaping it today. Today, today. Give them a big round of applause. And you know what you heard, you see some of the amazing new vehicles and soon to be new facilities at BJCTA for Max. But there's also a lot coming in terms of technology as well. So to guide us through the next big thing for Max technology wise, Please welcome to the stage our interim director of information technology, Mr. Herb Walker. Thank you, thank you. When I first arrived at BJCTA almost exactly one year ago, Director Shaw expressed to me one of her main goals. That was for BJCTA to embrace, embrace technology. Technology is a key element in serving our customers, and we're doing just that with our new integrated mobile application. We refer to this mobile application as Project Pivot. Why Project Pivot? Because we're pivoting from business as usual. The transit industry is reporting an increase in ridership as there are more options 
embracing, enhancing our commuter, commuter experience. Applications needed to be easily understood to navigate our various services. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to demo our new integrated mobile application. You'll see later this mobile application will include all modes of Mac services, including fixed route, BRT, the new Max Micro Transit, Paratransit, on demand services, and other mobile options like bikes, scooters, Uber, and Lyft. It's important for us to understand that this new mobile application is not simply an upgrade, it's reimagining how you plan your trips. Now, I'm going to take a few minutes. Let's get into the demo itself. Imagine your cell phone in your hand. This is your transit companion. Now, the very first thing we'll do is build our profile. And in building our profile, there are a couple of things. You own your profile. You can filter it for your personal route, preferences, real-time adjustments, and a level of interactivity that again puts control in the palm of your hand. You're able to create and save your favorite filters and profile, save your preferred method of transportation. You can make changes to your profile and favorites and destination as often as you would like. Let's go to the next one. After building your profile, Sorry, I meant to click again. After building your profile, the very next thing you do is your trip planning and scheduling. The key things that you'll be able to do here, it offers simplified trip planning. You're gonna be able to plan your trip with real-time information, interactive maps with live bus and traffic updates. So let's plan a trip. So we're gonna use the Rick Shaw as our guinea pig this evening. Now, I need Director Shaw to get to work on time. It's my responsibility from a technology perspective to make sure that that happens. So here, Director Shaw has many options. She has the ability, which she's already set in her profile, which is work, airport, and home. So all Director Shaw has to do is click work for our example today. So I just click work. So, Director Shaw now is presented with all of her options for modes of transportation. We have bus, BRT, microtransit, paratransit, executive services. Once you get that, please. <laughs> and so with all of those options that have been provided, we give them, we list them here below. So she could take BRT, which would take 42 minutes, she could take microtransit, which would take 25 minutes. It's all based on her preference. Let's go to the next page. Now, once she does that, we are offering uh, the ability, when you're setting up your profile, to set up a credit card or a debit card. But that doesn't mean we're going completely cashless, right? We're simply just offering other options. Let's go to the next one. Now, this is the trip experience, right? So finally, you can even enhance your trip experience with real-time vehicle travel, an estimated arrival update. There will be real-time service alerts and real-time rerouting when needed in the case of delays, service interruptions, route changes. Um, and the key thing is, let's finish up. Oh, wait, I don't want to click yet, hold on. No, never mind. So what happens is when Director Shaw is on her route, we're going to keep track of her the entire way. If Director Shaw, based on her route preference, has to walk 200 yards or 100 yards to the nearest uh, station, we will show where she is on that route. We will tell her how far she has to walk to BRT. If she's hopping on BRT and taking it to uh, our central station uh, to hop on a fixed route, we will track that the entire way. So she knows exactly where she is the entire route. Let's go to the next one here. 
Now the key thing is, the last thing Director Shaw will see is once her route is finished and she's safely at work, she has an opportunity to leave real-time feedback on her experience. That's important for us, right? It's super important for us because we want to continue to provide excellent service to our customers. So let me wrap this up here. So the, the cool thing about this is this is not the first release, right? There will be additional versions as we introduce the latest technology like artificial intelligence that will provide the ability to receive job notification, places to eat, right? You're able to do this all through your cell phone, right? Real-time chat with our customer service department and other associated options. The future of mobile transit applications for our community is exciting. It's full of opportunities. And we're looking forward to launching this new application by late fall of this year. Thank you. We now turn our attention to the driving force behind EJCTA. We're talking about a Mercedes, a Ferrari, a Porsche. You get the picture, right? The top of the line. She is indeed among the best. Charlotte Shaw is behind numerous initiatives that have significantly, significantly advanced the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority. I want you to watch this short video, a short display of all her numerous accomplishments. I never thought that I would be a CEO. I didn't think that long of myself. All I wanted to do was make a difference. Charlotte Shaw has made a difference at the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority ever since she grabbed headlines as the new CEO in October of 2021. It was unanimous that we should have her as our CEO. And she's proven us right in our decision. She is just an excellent leader. She came in, reorganized things put the right people in the right jobs. I think one of the biggest things um, BJCT got right is the hiring of their new CEO, Charlotte Shaw. Um, I know her, um, I trust her, um, and I love the fact not only about her passion, but her vision. The vision she shares with her leaders, steering the agency while redefining excellence in every lane of BJCTA's journey. I had to get buy-in from not just the organization, but from the leaders of the company. What are we working for? And it's those values, it's that value system that makes a difference in how we respond and interact with our customers and all of our stakeholders. So I think just her energy and vision are exciting and are important. And it's uh, part of what we need right now as we're thinking about what transportation needs to be in the future. Today, BJCTA is under effective management with Shaw showcasing an $11 million budget increase for fiscal year 23, followed by a $9 million boost in FY24. Director Charlotte Shaw has been a major asset to the total revitalization of this transit system. Shaw's expertise guided the agency through a landscape of challenges to secure more than $17 billion in four major grants, including a groundbreaking TOD grant from the Federal Transit Administration. I think that Shaw is great for the system because she's open for new ideas of how we can better our transit system in Montana. With openness, groundbreaking ideas, and technological advances, Shaw launched a new microtransit fleet, tackled driver shortages, and sparked a partnership with the city of Birmingham and VIA for nighttime services. You want to have a reason not to ride now. That's what she's doing. Trying to find a reason for you not to have that excuse to ride now. And she's done a great job. Named the executive leader of the year at the Minority Business Awards, and appointed the second vice president of the Transit Association of Alabama's Board of Directors, Shaw's vision is elevating BJCTA to new heights. She has no lack of ambition in terms of what she wants to accomplish for BJCTA and for public transportation. Under Shaw's leadership, the wills of change are in motion for Birmingham and Jefferson County. For her, 
It's all about ensuring everyone has a seat on the bus to the future. I work so hard because I want to see a change in how people do this. And not because it matters how they do this, but it matters that they feel they have a good system. Charles and Shaw, we're going to give her just a moment. She'll give her address in just a few minutes. But first, we are also honored, as I told you earlier, to have with us the Director of Oversight and Program Management from the Federal Transit Administration. Please welcome to our stage Margarita Miranda Sandberg. Good evening. I'm Maggie Sandberg, Director of Program Management and Project Oversight at the FTA Regional Office in Atlanta. I bring you greetings from our FTA Regional Administrator, Dr. Yvette Taylor, and our FTA Administrator, um, Nuria Fernandez. It is an honor to be here today and to join you as you release your ambitious five-year plan to transform the public transportation landscape. Certainly, the innovative projects you will undertake advance FTA's mission of improving America's communities through public transportation, and we're happy to support you as you launch innovative programs, vehicles, services, and facilities. Having access to transit like here in Birmingham and Jefferson County mean the difference between what school you can go to, what factory, warehouse, or office building you can work in, or what job interview you can get to that might change your life. I can see through your goals that BJCTA gets it. We are excited that you are investing in transit-oriented development an FTA priority because it is good for the environment and creates economic development that is good for the bottom line. TOD reduces transportation costs for American families and lowers our carbon footprint by improving transit access to jobs and services. It also helps promote transit ridership by creating more opportunities for people to access transit centers and bus stops. And while transit is the greenest transportation option, we're happy to support BJCTA and other transit agencies continue to combat the climate crisis by supporting cleaner and greener buses. Over the last two years, FTA has awarded $3.5 billion nationwide for low or no emission buses. These grants will fund close to 3,000 electric or low emission buses, doubling the amount on our roadways today and making our air cleaner. That includes a $13.6 million grant to BJCTA to transition to cleaner, natural, compressed natural gas buses, as well as build CNG fuel stations. Those are two important steps toward reducing your footprint and making your system greener. Birmingham and Jefferson County have a long transportation history dating back to 1884 with the establishment of the Birmingham Railway Company. Today provides an opportunity to celebrate the tradition of Jefferson County providing safe, affordable, and efficient public transportation that boosts the region's economy and ensures a sustainable future. Over the last five years, FDA has obligated close to $90 million to BJCTA. Money we know is being put to good use we believe that your continued work with the Federal Transit Administration represents more than just an investment. It is our collaborative effort to continue to work together, creating greener, more efficient community transit. Thank you. For some reason, 
I don't think you heard, but she said $13.6 million dedicated to BJCTA. Is that not a good thing? Well, we're going to finish up now with our director, with her state of transit address. Please now welcome to the stage the dynamic visionary, Charlotte Sharp. so much. Wow, I can drop the mic and go home. This is over with. You know, I'm really, really excited about today. And I'm even more excited about the opportunity to discuss with you some of the things we have planned. But thank you for coming out. I mean, it warms my heart to see, to see you here supporting us and the kinds of things that we're doing. But before I get into just a few things I want to say, I want to recognize my board, the uh, coaches behind all that we do. Uh, this is a great group of people that I work with, and I want you all to stand up. I have Theodore Smith, who is our chair. I have our vice chair, who is Willie Davis, Rebecca Carpenter. I also have Paige Cooper, Randall Miner, Raymond Cunningham, and Rod Evans, and who's not here with us today, is LaDon Jones. Give my board a hand, please. <laughs> you know, we, we are often, we are often uh, asked, how do we keep, uh, what do we do with our relationship? Because we are the example for the industry in a lot of ways between the CEO and the board of directors. And so I just want to say to you all, thank you so much for allowing me the room and the ingenuity and the creativity to do what I do. Uh, we have a great relationship and I respect each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And then also, I just want to acknowledge my predecessor is here with us today, the man who came in to stabilize this company before me. So Frank Martin, would you please stand up and so we can give you a hand. And I tell you, one of the first things I did when I became the CEO, because I was a brand new CEO, and so I wanted to make sure that I got a kitchen cabinet. Have you ever heard of a kitchen cabinet? Well, a kitchen cabinet is a group of people that you call on when you need people to talk to confidentially. It's people that you can count on and go in the back room where no one else sees you and have conversations about everything and anything and they give you the best advice. Well, I want you all to meet a few people who are very important to me in the industry. And Dr. Scott is one of those individuals. I didn't know her, so I was like a groupie at one of the after conferences last year. Her reputation goes a long way. She's been a previous CEO. See, keep standing, Dr. Scott. She's been a previous CEO of four transit agencies, as well as an appointment by the Obama administration. So when I got the opportunity to meet her, I ran. And since that point, she has been such a great confidant for me and a mentor. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Now the next person I'm gonna to introduce to you all, this man, when I went for the interview, I called him, I was in a leadership program called the Eno Foundation, and it is a leadership program for transit executives. So I was learning to be an executive and I didn't even know. But anyway, when I called this guy, I said, listen, I'm interviewing for this position and I need your help, I need you to coach me for the interview. He didn't hesitate. He said, not only will I coach you, but I will also mentor and sponsor you. And this man was a CEO at the Dallas Transit Agency for almost over 20 years. And his name is Gary Thomas. Would you please stand and be recognized? And not only does he mentor me and sponsor me, he talks 
talks to me every Friday for the last two years at 8.30 a.m. and has not missed a day. And so as I developed my team, I realized that I needed some people who understood transit and who could also teach me things. I believe in co-leadership. I'm not a person who believes that you sit in an office and you just point the finger and give orders. That's not who I am. And so I wanted to put a team together that I could co-lead with, and I've done that. And so Stephanie Walker is my chief, chief of staff. Would you please stand? And also, my chief financial officer, Glenn Dickerson, would you please stand? So these two individuals are more than just their titles. They're actually are very supportive. We can talk together, we laugh together, we cry together, we get frustrated together. But in the end, they are the greatest leaders that I can ever depend on. And so also, I'd like to recognize this team that you see in the back of me. Each person has been very strategically hand-selected by me. Some I call and said, you're leaving your job and you're going to come work with me. And others I met when I got to BJCTA. They were already there under Frank Martin. And then some I selected who were already in the company and I increased them and promoted them into their roles. This team works tirelessly every day. Not only did we have to build a strategic company, but we also are responsible for managing the day-to-day -day while at the same time trying to develop this strategic plan for you all. So I could not do this without them because, see, in a big company like Martin in Atlanta, where I came from, you can get 10 people to do one thing, right? That's the way it works at a larger company. But at BJCTA and in a smaller company, I have one person who does 10 different things. And when I tell you this team juggles every day, we pivot priorities every day, we had to even work through the Christmas season for this day of transit today. So I want my team to stand so that we can recognize you and acknowledge you today. And so, uh, also, I also like to mention that um, Senator John Bull and Mayor Randall had to leave, but Mayor Bricotta, thank you so much for coming. And I'll tell you, we get our funding from our municipalities, our local funding. And when I always call on my mayors to come, they come. And I just want you to know that we appreciate you being here tonight. And we look forward to doing more for you at BJCTA. So let's talk a little bit. I won't be before you long. And I just want to talk about where we are and where we've been, or where we've been, and where we are now, and where we're going. And so you got a lot about that today. Uh, and Art, my goodness, I don't know where you are, but you did an excellent job with these videos. And this was my first time seeing a, a lot of this stuff today. And so um, we are in an infrastructure period that Maggie talked about a little bit. And so when I came on board, we were at the infrastructure bill. We had not quite, it had not quite made a law yet. And so I wanted to make sure that as we develop our strategic plan, we were developing this plan in line with, this, with the infrastructure law that later became a law. And so I knew that I would be with the company five years because I had a three-year contract at that time and another two-year option, but my board has since, uh, I uh, renewed my contract for another three years. And so I want to thank you. So I wanted to develop a five-year plan 
It will go out to 26. Two of those years we have already accomplished. So the first two years what we did was evaluate and plan. So when I first got in the company, I took the time to actually plan what was going on. I wanted to evaluate what I saw. And so after we did that, we said, okay, after the planning period, we now are going into the growth period in line with the infrastructure bill because even this year, it, it uh, funded another $45 billion more than it did last year. And so we knew that we would have the opportunity over three years to grow. That's why you see transit on the grow. That's why you see the growth period for three years. Because what we plan to do is just that. So we know at 26, we have to sustain. So we're not going to grow anything we can't sustain. But I am a proponent to believe that now transit agencies, the responsibility and ownership is on us to find revenue. We're not like the old days anymore. In the old days, the riders were there. We can make money from the ridership. That's how bus companies made a lot of their funding. But today, we can't do that. But guess what? We're kind of going back in history, going full circle. So we have to find revenue streams. And so one of the things that we're doing to do that, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when I kind of go over the details of the 7030 plan. But that's why you're going to see executive services. Market rate executive services, like Uber and Lyft. We will pick you up from your home. I have to find revenue streams because in 2026, there's going to be an infrastructure cliff. They call it the cliff, which means the money that was poured in from the infrastructure bill will be fading off in 26. With changes in administration, we always know those kinds of things happen. And so therein lies why we did a five-year plan. Now, I would like to do more of a five-year plan, but that's difficult to do, right, John? Because we don't get dedicated transit funding. That's not something we have in the state of Alabama. We are one of three states who do not get funding from the state, or not just from the state, but any kind of dedicated transit funding. Now, we get local funding, which we thank our cities very much. And we get most of our funding from the city of Birmingham. So we keep y'all happy, OK? <laughs> but the difficulty is it's not identified and defined as dedicated funding as we do in the transit industry. Because dedicated funding is usually dedicated by some sales tax or something just for transit. So, as part of the clip, we really have to find that eventually. And so, I have a group of people here with me today. And this is, this is exciting. I have every CEO, transit director, from the state of Alabama. And I want John to take a few minutes because it's important that you know who they are because, oh boy, they messed around and put me on the board now. <laughs> and so we are preparing a message. We have come together and realized we have more in common. And I'm talking urban and rural areas. It is now that we combine our Go efforts. Come on, we man. have recognized that. We are a team. And now we're going to prepare to go to Montgomery. Thank you, Director Shaw. Uh, good evening. My name is John Autry. I'm the president of the Transit Association of Alabama. Uh, the Transit Association of Alabama represents uh, agencies uh, from north to south, all parts of the state of Alabama, uh, rural and urban. Uh, also, uh, with us in uh, almost half the section 
Half this section over here is uh, with the Transit Associ Association of Alabama or the uh, Alabama Department of Transportation. So I would like to uh, introduce all those that are here to support Director Shaw, the, the BJCTA, and the staff of the BJCTA. From uh, the Alabama Department of Transportation, we have Brad Lindsay, Brian Fair, Penny Orr, from the uh, TAA, Sam Tinsley from Montgomery, Joyce Eccles uh, from Coleman County, Ann Simpson, uh, Baldwin County, Damon Dash, uh, the Wave and Mobile, Casey Lewis also from Montgomery, and Russell Lawrence from the Tuscaloosa Transit Authority. We also have our Transit Association business partners, uh, Randy Brewer from Gilly and Eric Weimer from Model One. Uh, we're all excited to be here and to support you, Charlotte. Uh, TAA wholeheartedly supports uh, the vision for uh, new modes and expanded services with the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority. Thank you, Charlotte, for your leadership. Mobility app, integrated app is one, project pivot. And then we're not just a bus company anymore. anymore. Because, of, because of the infrastructure law, we can now empower ourselves to be more than just a driving force of buses. We now can participate in TOD, which is Transit Oriented Development. We actually like to call that transit-oriented communities because we have a dream for our central station. You saw a little bit of that in the, in the uh, previous slide. But what you see here right now is a dream. And we can do that now because of the way the funding, because of the infrastructure law, we have proportionally received more capital dollars we have the largest tra uh, transit TOD planning grant last year than any other state. Whoa. We were the largest planning grant that we got as a partner Thank you. with Rev Birmingham and Woodlawn Association. And so our partners are important to us. But this station, we see the opportunity to revamp it with mixed use housing, retail space. Now you see a train, so this is a dream. <laughs> but guess what? Dreams do come true. Because while we do not have autonomous vehicles right now, we have our first autonomous vehicle here today that many of you have already demoed. And so I wanted you to see this picture because I wanted you to see the reality of what can happen when we have an autonomous vehicle that is not that far in the future. And so now, as part of our transit organization, our priorities, we now are going to be at the table in discussions for high-speed rail. You will not leave us out of discussion. But the autonomous vehicle, I am going to allow Daisy to come up and talk with you a little bit about the autonomous vehicle experience today. And you may think that it's far off, but like Councilor O'Quinn said earlier, who is one of our biggest supporters and advocators for BJCTA, it is not that far. It is a reality. And we want to be on the cutting edge. And this is new technology. And we also have submitted a grant with UAB at Tuscaloosa, where we are reviewing autonomous vehicles in Alabama. Yeah. And so what I am saying is that look for us in the future 
to talk about this more and to educate you more so that you can see this as part of our plan. Daisy? Well, thank you so much, um, everyone. How many of you were able to actually try the autonomous vehicle today? Fantastic. So we actually gave over 35 rides, and I think that equates to about at least almost 100 people because we had about three people per vehicle. And um, we're super excited about this and really are grateful to the um, Birmingham as well as the Alabama community for welcoming us here. We have operated in 12 different cities across the U.S., and we're on public roads with FMVSS compliant vehicles. We're also on public roads with wheelchair accessible vehicles, working with broad ability and Q strength and the USDOT and FTA through federally funded programs to make this happen. And one of the driving forces for us at May Mobility is that we want to make sure that this autonomy innovation doesn't leave people behind. It's very easy for technology to leap way ahead and then not being able to turn around and look, you know, is there proper workforce development? Are we able to make sure that transit workers are understanding, you know, how autonomy plays into the mix? Are we complementing public transit to make sure we're driving ridership and really making sure we're, we're bridging those gaps, whether it's first mile, last mile, or transit deserts? Are we making sure that we're able to service urban systems as well as rural systems? And we have, um, we're launching in Miami actually, which is huge, right, huge city, but we also have a, um, a service in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, which is a community of 10,000 people. And the biggest riders um, there are people with disabilities and seniors who want to age in place. So um, we're so excited about Birmingham and we hope that we're able to work together under the leadership of Director Shaw as well as the board and um, the community, which is so important, which is why we're here today. Um, and then also our partners. We know VIA, our partners, have done a fantastic job with Max On Demand, and we're excited that we've been able to partner with them throughout our journey at May Mobility. So thank you so much again for, for embracing us and having us here, and we hope to be able to be here soon. Thank you. Thank you, baby. And now, I want to talk with you a little bit more about the 7030 plan. It is important that when you walk away today, you understand this plan. We're taking 100% of our fixed route, and it is going to be 70% of our services. 30% of that service is going to be microtransit. Now, that's called a service allocation system. We cannot continue to do business as usual. We have to rethink transit. If you think about the 1940s doing the streetcar, it had over 40 routes. And 1958 was when the last streetcar drove through Birmingham. Then the new company, Birmingham Transit, had over 70 routes. Today we have 20. That's a big difference. And for various reasons, we know why transportation has changed. But now we have the opportunity to become full circle. We have the perfect infrastructure in Birmingham to make this change. It's not business as usual with transit companies. I tell my colleagues all the time, we used to be the monopoly of ridership. That is not the case anymore. But there is a difference between ridership and coverage. And I'm going to show you on this map. I'm going to give you an example. And many of you probably cannot see the little dots on this map. But there are lots of dots with 16 buses. And then there are a lot of little dots together, connected, to make up density, as you can imagine in a city. Now, as planners, 
I want you to plan for me how you're going to plan this route. With 16 buses, oh, let me give you another caveat. Four of my people, two are on vacation. <laughs> two are on workman's comp. And I got two to call in sick. How many buses I got there? Eight buses. So now I want you to plan for me this route. Tell me how you're going to work the buses I have left to get the service across these dies that represent communities and neighborhoods. Not easy, is it? So if I bring up the next slide, I can show you the difference in where we were and where we are. Coverage is where we are. We don't have a ridership system, Birmingham. We did in the 1940s. We did in the 1960s. But today, in 2024, I cannot give you a ridership system because I don't have enough riders and buses and workforce. And one of the reasons is because I have a very limited budget. There's only so much I can do with my local funding and my federal. I can only use my federal for certain things, capital investment, purchasing buses. And so what this means, this is where we want to get to. We want to get to being able to connect those dots off of major corridors. This is major, this is how the streetcar man, this is how it ran in 1960, when they had all of those riders. But today, this is difficult because we don't get the fares and we don't have dedicated funding. So now what I have to do is triage my system in such a way that I have to stretch all of these buses across these dots and you see they are so far apart that you got long wait time, frequency is long, but this is the best that I can do. But I didn't settle for that. I told the team we had to come up with ways. If we didn't get one more dime, what could we do? So I came up with a service allocation system. We're going to take some of our service, 70%, and introduce major quarters, and the 30% will cross our neighborhoods. And so if you look at the map that we put together for our new system, if you look at the map, <laughs> For our new system, our new 70-30 plan, then now you will see how we came up with service allocation. When you put those two systems together, that's the name of it in the industry. And so this map will show you where we're going.
So what you see in these gray little areas, those are what you call microtransit hubs. And we just ran out of time and didn't have the opportunity to actually put the hubs. But we're going to put the hubs in areas where there's microtransit that feeds into the 70%. And so now we can reduce wait times and we can increase frequency. But we cannot do this without connecting these modes of transportation. Now the wonderful thing in my strategic plan, I asked uh, Wim Taylor, who I made come work with me out of retirement, pulled him in and said, come on, you come to Birmingham. And he worked with us on our new fleet plan. And so I have purchased all of my CNG buses for the next nine years. That was part of the strategic plan. So that I would not have to use that capital for my three-year growth period. So now in my growth period, I can purchase microtransit. We've already purchased 11 vehicles that you'll see when you leave here tonight. Take a look when you go out the door, stop and look at those buses. Micro Transit, our new Micro Transit buses, the buses, our vans are out there. Our new executive service van is out there. That new bright, pretty Mercedes. The new buses out there. And then what I was hoping to do that I did not get a chance to do was show you one of our micro hubs. And so that'll be for part two. <laughs> but as you can see, you know, my dad taught me. He said, I want to teach you to fish. And this is us fishing for ourselves. We know what we can do for Birmingham. Birmingham, you are the leader in transportation. 60 years ago, you were considered the number one transportation company in the United States. People came to Birmingham. You had diesel buses when no one else had. You are one of the longest transportation systems in the United States behind Boston, Massachusetts. Birmingham. You created transportation. There are a lot of things that we sacrificed for transportation in Alabama. Don't let that sacrifice be in vain. It is imperative that we create policies for transit as a transportation network. I didn't see you. I'm glad you're here. And so now, we have the opportunity to change this system to where it is respected, it is reliable and convenient. There were times when we used to go to conferences and Birmingham come to the door and people would go the other way. <laughs> right, Frank? Isn't that how they, now we go to conferences. Oh, they have a lot to say. I need your help to change this system in ways you cannot imagine. We have to rethink transportation in Alabama, in Birmingham. We have the first P3 project in Mobile, Alabama. First one in Alabama. Tuscaloosa, I saw it on the news today. They're taking donations for, for, for bus shelters. We shouldn't have to ask for donations. We've sacrificed a lot in Alabama for buses and transportation. That should be automatic for us. We need to go back to being the leader. I'm going to tell you a short story and then I'll end. I was reading this book. I love to read. And I read this brief, I'm in the process. I'm finishing up now. It's called Think Again by Adam Gray. How many of you know what smoke jumpers are? Anybody ever heard that term? You remember? Well, in this book, it made my very point. Smoke jumpers are firefighters. 
but they're very rare. They're like the Navy SEAL. They're trained by the book, very rigid. You follow this book, you go in and we drop you down for fires. You have to follow the book for me. Well, there was this one story where they dropped 15 firefighters in the worst fire you could think about. They dropped them down to the coach. And when the firefighters, all 15, got to the bottom, they realized the fire was raging much too fast. So they had to run back up the hill to get to the top. Well, the fire was coming so fast, they couldn't get to the top as fast as the fire was running. And so one of the foremen raised his hand. He said, hey, follow me, but you got to drop your backpack. You gotta drop everything you know. You gotta drop your equipment, your saws. You gotta drop your shovel. You gotta drop everything that's important to you to go this way. They said, no, man, you're crazy. We're not dropping our backpack. Are you losing your mind? So not all of them followed him. A few followed him. And then he said, not only drop your backpack, let's start a fire. They say, you crazy? You want us to start a fire in the fire? You've lost your mind. He said, no, you start the fire, and the fuel from the other fire won't reach this fire. We can walk through the hole. Well, only three people followed him. One of them got scared and picked back up his backpack. So he left and went with the other group. The other guy, the other two guys, they just ran, ran off the fire. They had endurance, so they beat the fire. But this guy, he took his handkerchief, he put some water on it, he made the fire, he went through the hole, and the fire went over him. And he was able to lay down on the ground, put his handkerchief over his face, and go down until the fire went over his head. They got to the top of the hill. The two who outran the fire were there. He was the only one that made it through the fire. And the other ones perished in the fire. And so what I'm saying, there's a moral to the story. Two, we have endured transit. And we have outrun most of the fires. But the one guy who made it through the fire used his mental intelligence. And he asked him, say, well, why did you drop your backpack? He said, because it was old. It was tra tra tradition. And you trained me to keep it when I needed to save my life. And so what I'm saying, we have a backpack. And now it's time for us to take those old laws out of that backpack. They're too heavy. And now it's time for us to rethink transit. It's too heavy. Take it out the backpack. Now it's time for us to do things that we have always done that no longer work. That now we have to rethink it for our very survival for transportation. Not just transit. Transportation is part of a network. Don't be the firefighters who learn those old habits back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and didn't want to change it. And it could have very well saved their lives. We can do this, but we need you. Our team works very hard. When we do this 70-30 plan, we will educate. We will do video tutorials. We will have website notices. We will do meetings. We'll do all that we can. But in the end, the only one who can help me change the system are the citizens and you. I appreciate you. And before I leave, I want to say I appreciate my spouse. I thank you, Wanda Shaw, for being supportive and with me through this whole process. Thank you so much. And finally, I joined the team when I was about to throw in the towel, who told me that I had more to do. And Leadership Birmingham, your support has been all the major difference. Thank you so much. Thank you. So.
to get to know, now you know, why she is such a great CEO and executive director. We're going to let you go, but you know how they do at the Apple presentation? We have one more thing before we leave. And guess what? I am now the proud brand ambassador for Max. So growing up in the United City, I grew up in the home of South with my grandmother. And now Max is going to do some incredible things from Birmingham, Jefferson County, stepping up big time with a whole new look. New technology and now new service. Man, Max has so much new good stuff, man. It's going to make you want to like not drive and just ride the bus, man. I am so excited about this, man. Hop on the Max bus, save some gas, avoid parking hassles. Enjoy the ride with a smile. And I should know because if you call me, we can smile at nothing. All right? Max, moving transit forward. All right. Thank you guys for coming to the first ever State of Transit. Get home safe. Hopefully, you ride the bus if you're not, drive home safe. If you're not, drive home safe.